Greetings, true believers, and welcome to another sensational episode of History of the Marvel Universe. First off, allow me to preface this video by saying that some of the imagery used and plot lines referenced originate from comics originally produced in the 1950s. As such, some of the depictions of Asian characters may seem dated or offensive by modern standards, particularly that of the titular Yellow Claw himself. This is mitigated somewhat by the fact that the hero of these classic stories, FBI agent Jimmy Woo, was himself a Chinese-American, but unfortunately in his first appearance in Yellow Claw No. 1, he was given the stereotypical yellowed skin tone that was sadly typical of Asian characters of the time. Thankfully, this appears to have been fixed in subsequent issues of the same series, giving Jimmy and other Asian characters a more natural skin tone, leaving only the villainous Yellow Claw himself to be depicted in such a manner. And with that bit of context out of the way, our story today begins with the sinister Yellow Claw, Plan Chu, although a more accurate translation of his name would reportedly be the Golden Claw. Supposedly hundreds of years old and of mysterious origins, the Claw was a Chinese descendant of Genghis Khan, who sought nothing less than world domination. He even blackmailed a notorious Nazi war criminal, Fritz Voltzmann, into serving as his right-hand man. This was at a time when superheroes were few and far between, with many of the masked crime fighters of the 1940s having retired or disappeared. And so to combat this threat, the FBI assigned a young but talented agent named Jimmy Wu to the case. Over the following months, Jimmy battled the Yellow Claw and foiled many of his sinister plans, often with the aid of the Claw's own grandniece, Suan. Things came to a head in 1958 when the Yellow Claw abducted the President of the United States. Masked heroes may have been rare at that time, but there were a small number of super-powered individuals active, and so Jimmy Wu was given authority to assemble a team capable of rescuing President Eisenhower. First up was Venus, a siren who took over that identity after Aphrodite, who had previously fought crime under that name, returned to Olympus. Recruited alongside her was Bob Grayson, another crime fighter who used the name Marvel Boy. Grayson was raised on an eternal colony on Uranus and wielded the quantum bands long before the cosmic protector Quasar ever wore them. Jimmy also approached Namora, a cousin of Namor, a hero who fought alongside Captain America and the Human Torch during World War II. However, this was during the time when Namor was missing, and so Namora declined to join as she was preoccupied with searching for him. However, during her search, she discovered the immobilized remains of M-11, a humanoid robot that had disappeared after murdering its own creator. Namora reported the killer robot's location to Jimmy, and after it was fished out of the ocean, Marvel Boy was able to repair and reprogram the machine with Uranian technology. The final person chosen for the team was Kenneth Hale, the Gorilla Man. Hale was once a normal human, but after being plagued by nightmares of a mystical gorilla, he traveled to Africa to slay the beast. This caused the gorilla's curse to pass on to Hale, granting him eternal life, but trapping him in the body of an ape. Hale went into hiding in the African bush, but with the aid of another forest-dwelling hero, Jan of the Jungle, Marvel Boy was able to find the Gorilla Man and recruit him into Wu's squad of G-Men. And with the team assembled, Jimmy Wu led the assault on the Yellow Claw's fortress in Outer Mongolia. They successfully rescued the President from the Claw's sinister grasp, and the team went on to work together for about half a year before they were disbanded. It seems the government thought the world wasn't ready for such a team, and so their existence was covered up. And in the following years, activity from the Yellow Claw suddenly ceased, and Jimmy was promoted out of the field and given a cushy desk job. Years later, the Claw seemed to re-emerge to battle Nick Fury and the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Naturally, Jimmy Woo came out of retirement to join forces with S.H.I.E.L.D. and battle his old nemesis. However, this turned out to be a ruse, as this Yellow Claw was revealed to be an android duplicate, created and used by Doctor Doom as a part of a game he designed for his own amusement. 
But working with S.H.I.E.L.D., Jimmy Woo got back in the field, and not long after this, he officially joined the Counterterrorism Agency. One of Wu's most noteworthy assignments during his time with S.H.I.E.L.D. was being assigned to the Godzilla Squad, when the monstrous lizard made its way to the United States. But the years rolled on and Jimmy's age began to catch up with him. During this time, he used his position in S.H.I.E.L.D. to continue searching for the Yellow Claw, eventually drawing a connection between his enemy and a series of corporations called the Atlas Foundation. After discovering their headquarters, Wu assembled a team of S.H.I.E.L.D. agents to investigate. However, it seems they stumbled into a trap, and the entire squad was wiped out in some kind of fiery blast. Jimmy barely survived with severe burns and a loss of higher brain function. But then, several of Wu's old allies, the Gorilla Man, the Human Robot, and Marvel Boy, broke into the S.H.I.E.L.D. facility, keeping him on life support, and abducted him. Marvel Boy used his Uranian technology to restore Jimmy's mind and body, but because Grayson's last mental impression of him was from the late 1950s, Wu was restored to the state he was in at that time, losing his memories of the intervening decades. Joining forces with the Wakandan S.H.I.E.L.D. agent Derek Kanata, Jimmy began reassembling his old team. Venus was happy to rejoin her old friends, while Namora, who was too busy searching for her cousin in the 1950s, was now free to stand with the G-Men. With the team reunited, the G-Men began retracing Jimmy's steps in his previous investigation into the Atlas Foundation. And during this investigation, they discovered that the robot, M-11, had originally been commissioned by the Yellow Claw, and that the Claw had been using it to spy on them all this time. Fortunately, Wu was able to convince the robot to sever his connection with the Claw. Using data from M-11, the team was then able to find the Atlas Foundation headquarters once more. This time, when the team encountered the flaming trap that had killed the previous squad, Wu commanded M-11 to erect an energy shield that protected them from harm. And they came face to face with the source of the flame, as well as the source of the Yellow Claw, or rather, the Golden Claw's name. A massive, golden dragon named Mr. Lao. The dragon revealed several long-held secrets and told of how the Atlas Foundation was the legacy of the Mongol Empire, and Plan Chu, the Golden Claw, was a descendant of Genghis Khan, who used various magics and medicines to persevere for several lifetimes. However, his reign could not last forever, and a successor needed to be chosen, another direct descendant of the Khan. And the one chosen at birth was a baby boy named Wu Yen Jet. However, the boy's parents wanted nothing to do with the Yellow Claw and fled to America, where they gave their son the anglicized name James, or as he came to be known, Jimmy Wu. They encouraged his career in law enforcement, wanting their son to grow up strong and noble. Mr. Lau saw opportunity in this, however, for if Jimmy Wu could rise through the government ranks before being recruited into the Atlas Foundation, it could increase their power and influence even more. However, to ensure that Jimmy, as an Asian American in the 1950s, would be trusted by the government and the people, the Atlas Foundation crafted a nemesis for him, one which would play into America's fears in the form of the Yellow Claw. And while Jimmy won victory over victory against the menace of the Yellow Claw, still he was never appointed to the kind of position that Lau had hoped for. But after so many years, he had finally uncovered the truth and proved himself worthy of taking control of the Atlas Foundation. And so he did. Grasping the flaming staff, James Wu became the new Khan of the Eternal Empire. His task completed, Plan Chu, the man once feared as the Yellow Claw, stepped aside into the dragon's mouth, sacrificing his own life so that none would question Jimmy's rule. This transition was not completely smooth, however, as the Atlas Foundation had always been a criminal organization, and Jimmy attempted to turn it into a force for good. 
But when rogue factions cropped up, Jimmy Woo and his allies would take them down, and thus he and the other former G-Men became known as the Agents of Atlas. And that is the story of Jimmy Woo. But on one final note, did you know that Marvel Comics wasn't always named Marvel Comics? They were established in 1939 as Timely Comics, but in 1961 they changed their name in honor of the first book they ever published, Marvel Comics. But in the 1950s they published comics such as Men's Adventures, which introduced the Gorilla Man, Menace, which showed the world the human robot, and indeed the Yellow Claw, which featured Jimmy Woo. And during these years Marvel Comics actually went by a different name. Atlas Comics. Hey, that's all I've got for today, but thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, share the video, and subscribe for more Marvelous content. Be sure to leave a comment letting me know what Marvel hero or villain you want to hear about next. And as always, the issues referenced in this video are listed in the description below if you would like to read them for yourself, as well as links to other places you can find me, including my Discord server where you can join the discussion with other friends, fans, and followers of the show. So until next time, true believers, Excelsior!